This is a Dude Studios production. And hey, I'm the Dude. Hey, bartender. Welcome, thank you, thank you everyone, and welcome back to Hey Bartender Podcast. I am your bartender for the evening, you can call me Anthony, that seems to work out good so far. How's everybody doing tonight? It's Saturday, it's the weekend, we made it through another work week, at least some of us do, except for the restaurant workers, because pretty much all of us restaurant workers have to work on the weekends, because those are the busiest days of the week. Hey, stick around later on in the podcast. Uh, we're going to be listening to the single uh, Poison Arrow from the Screaming Females. But before we get into today's drink special, let's get a little business out of the way. Head on over to www.heybartenderpodcast and go pick yourself up a t-shirt, listen to some other more recent podcasts, help support the podcast by picking up a t-shirt or some kind of swag in there. And be much appreciated. That's www.heybartenderpodcast.com. Also, if you are in the mood for some good morning wake-up juice, uh, go to bartenderzonecoffee.com. They've got a huge selection of blends on there, novelty coffee cups, and if you're really in deep need of a new coffee maker, go check out the ones we got available on there. Bartenderzonecoffee.com. We uh, use... Promo code hey bartender at checkout and get 20% off your entire order. Hey, people, they got pumpkin spice there right now. Go check it out. So, uh, on to the, today's drink special because we cannot start a bar shift without having a drink special. I pulled this one off Instagram from the Mix Lab. Uh, the Mix, the underscore Mix Lab. Uh, they call this the Royal Daiquiri. Uh, the Royal Daiquiri is credited as the original creation of Don the Beachcomber. The original calls for par, Parfait Amour, one of the few violet liqueurs. Cream Yvette or Cream de uh, Violet are good substitutes that will uh, lead slightly different results in terms of taste and color. So, uh, the Mix Lab uh, says you make the Royal Daiquiri this way. You need... Two ounces of light rum, a half ounce of violet liqueur, half ounce of lime, one eighth teaspoon of rich, simple syrup. Shake with ice and strain into a chilled glass filled with crushed ice. You you guys ought to see the picture of this thing. It is definitely purple. Like, I'm talking Kool-Aid grape juice here. And uh, it looks delicious. If you guys get out there and try it, uh, make it for your customers, please let me know. Dude at HeyBartenderPodcast.com. I would love to hear the reviews of the drinks that I post on this podcast. So would the people that I promote uh, while talking about their drinks creations. Because, you know, we all want to know where, that we're doing a good job. And the whole point of this is to spread a little bit of information to other bartenders out there. So go check it out. I'll have a picture of it on the website along with the recipe. Go check it. Uh, go see it on www.heybartenderpodcast.com, and like I said, go check out the merchandise on there. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the podcast is made. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I had to fit that in. I love that movie, Spaceballs, and the whole merchandising scene with yogurt. Oh, uh, come on, you, that's a classic movie. You have to love it. Uh, there's a whole bunch of movies out there, but that I'll save that for another podcast because there were nights where we would watch movies purposely. Um, but I'm going to save that for a different show because I got something else that's been on my mind that I want to talk about. Now, say you're uh, bartending. Uh, you get, uh, you might get paid. Uh, well, you might get paid. Uh, I just, cause I just found out recently that some, a lot of the bars on the East coast, at least uh, part pay their bartenders little to nothing and make them claim their tips as their wages. Um, it, that uh, you know, that I I'm gonna I'm gonna purposely leave this part in where I stumble on my words because I just can't wrap my head around that. How can you do that? But uh, it's goes back to the long old tradition of like during prohibition, I suppose, because uh, you know they people just needed work. 
so the people would work in the bars and in to, to ensure extra good service or to make sure that the bartender gave you what you wanted, you gave him a couple bucks, you know, act like a big shot, say, hey, make it extra good for me, would you? And, you know, the bartender would most of the time uh, help you out, hook you up. But times have changed. And, you know, we're, we're way past the Prohibition era. And, but there's some parts of the United States that I guess still live in the 1800s somewhere or the early 1900s. Some, you know, uh, it's time to come up with the times here, people. There are activists out there that are trying to change things around for everybody so that we, as the service industry, get paid properly, get paid equally, or even get paid at all and not just have to live off our tips. Uh, granted, you know, sometimes our tips are really, really good, but then all of a sudden you get that one table, that six top, 10 top, whatever, or, you know, you don't get a 10 top anymore because of the whole COVID-19, but you get your six top and they decide to talk about business and they sit there and drink drinks all night long, sit, joke around, carry on, and they look at their bill at the end of the night. They stayed there for two hours. Two hours that you could probably have turned that. Um, let's No, let's uh, extend that. Let, they stay there for four hours. Four hours. You could have probably turned that table over maybe four, five times. But they decided to camp out. And when you get your tip at the end of the thing, say that their bill came out to 65, 70 bucks. And, you know, traditionally, maybe you might get twelve fifty, but is twelve fifty worth four hours? And I mean, come on, it uh, it's it's just uh, ridiculous that those guys paid you twelve fifty for four to six hours of your prime real estate. You got to that's why you got to get those tables turned over as fast as you possibly can. So. You people that don't get an hourly wage can make money because if you're not, if those people are camping out for too long, you're not making money anymore. You're just running back and forth for no reason. I mean, there was a podcast I did a while back. Uh, it was a letter from Roy, I think it was. And he stated, he, he lives in Europe, and he stated that he's completely fine with uh, people not tipping because uh, he gets uh, paid what he feels like he's worth and everything's just fine. There's no point in him getting angry at customers for not tipping. Well, good for him. And I'm proud, uh, proud of his, him and wherever he lives in Europe that, uh, he gets paid appropriately for the job. But, uh, here, most of us make minimum wage. If we're lucky bartenders, based on my experience, might make a couple extra bucks because they have a few more responsibilities that they have to deal with. But say one day uh, you go into work and your boss says uh, something to the effect of, uh, say that your manager says, I'm going to need you to come in an hour early uh, every day because we get shipments of food or a liquor or uh, you got to go to the liquor store and get the liquor. I'm going to need you to come in a little bit early to do that. Or I'm going to need you to uh, do the hiring process to make sure I want you to do the interviews of the new people that come, come into work for here. And he doesn't mention anything about possible raise, maybe benefits of some kind. And you start to think, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's your job. You know, say say it's the hiring thing. I think that's probably the better uh, better example. Your boss says, I want you to do the hiring of the new employees. So not along with your bar duties, along with your side work, you also have to conduct interviews. You also have to read resumes. You uh, have to do all the things that's involved with hiring a new person. That can take up a lot of time and can add to a little bit of stress because you're already dealing with a whole bunch of babies that you got to babysit uh, drinking alcohol or playing uh, some kind of lottery. But now you have to uh, hire the new recruit, 
train the new recruit and decide whether or not the new recruit can fit along uh, with your existing crew. Okay, that's a lot of responsibility that you got to take on. Forgive me, that's the best uh, the best example that I can think of as of right now. But wouldn't you think at one point adding on that responsibility, true managerial duties, along with your bartending shift, shouldn't you maybe get a little bit of a raise? But the manager doesn't mention anything about that. The manager just says, I need you to take this over. Have fun. And then you uh, you get those moments where you're like, I don't get paid enough for this. This is ridiculous. And you know, I've worked here for two years, maybe. I haven't gotten a raise yet. Uh, uh, bar, I bring in a lot of customers. And now you want me to take over managerial positions. Is this going to lead to a managerial position? Because uh, let's face it, most of us bartenders wouldn't want a managerial position because all of a sudden you go into either an hourly or a salary and you don't make the tips anymore because and because we love our tips. So you decide maybe you get the balls to go over to your manager and say, hey, listen, I already got a lot to do. Uh, is this extra responsibility uh, going to come with anything? Uh, am I going to get a raise? Is this going to lead to something bigger, better in the company maybe? And mar- managers go to different ways with that sort of thing. They either bluff their way out of it and try to say, yes, of course, this is uh, this is to build build you up to be a little bit better so you can do my job if I'm not here. They skip over the thing about money. They, they give you the feeling that you are needed. You are the one that they look up to, to uh, just in case they're not able to be there that day, the bar is protected. The bar is taken care of. Or you just flat out say, if you want me to do this, I'm going to need more money. And I've seen, uh, once again, bar, uh, bar managers go two different ways going, well, we really can't handle that right now. Or, uh, or they'll say something, well, let's talk about that later and, you know, try to, uh, sketch, you know, move that aside because truthfully, I bet you ten, nine times out of 10, probably 90, 99 times out of a hundred managers never expect their bartenders or servers to ask that question. They just expect them to go, yes, sir. And be on their way. But you guys, you don't realize that you've just upped your value. You not only are a kick-ass uh, drink slinger, you're not only kick-ass at customer service, but now you're handling the business aspect of the whole situation. So you're, you've become the entertainer, you're the server, and now you're the manager. Now, my whole question is, shouldn't compensation come along with that? In most of the jobs that I've ever had in my life, uh, I haven't been a uh, bartender all my life. I and uh, but in most jobs that I've seen, when situations like that come up, when they ask you to take on a new responsibility, uh, and you're ballsy enough to say, uh, "Is there going to be any more money involved?" Because that puts a lot more on my shoulders. Uh, that uh, it's happened two ways uh, for me. A lot of twos today. A lot of twos. Uh, it's happened two ways for me, where they said, uh, "We'll talk about it. Uh, there, there will be benefits for you later, but for right now, I just need you to take care of this." Or they all of a sudden forget they talk to you and find somebody else who doesn't have the guts to ask that question, and then you just lost your opportunity. So what do you do in that situation? You want the opportunity to, in order to grow. Sure. Uh, Learn a little bit more of the business aspect. Maybe open up your own business in the future. That's what a lot of bartenders would love to do, I'm sure, in their future. uh, You go from uh, entry-level position in a restaurant, let's say host, host or hostess, and then you move on into the kitchen, either being a dishwasher or a cook. And then maybe move up to the salad bar after that and then become a server and then eventually make your way behind the bar. Once you make your way behind the bar, 
there's really nowhere else for you to go. And so where do you go from there? You get to be a manager. And most of the time we don't want to be managers because managers uh, have a set amount of money that they make and uh, it's not nearly as close to what you were making in tips. But that's the next step in order to grow, but it almost feels like a step back, doesn't it? So what do you do? You Eventually you start thinking about, I want to open up my own bar. I want to, uh, you have this vision in your head where, you know, nothing but sports say, and uh, every night is ladies night, even though that's illegal in some states. Uh, and, you know, uh, you think to yourself, we're, we're going to make tons of money and, you know, and maybe every once in a while, just to keep things exciting, we may be robbed. Come on, I'm sure some of you out there think about that sort of thing. The excitement of getting robbed. Um, don't get excited about that. Free people who haven't been robbed before don't think, oh, I guess I'm not a bartender since I've never been robbed before. No, you don't want that to happen. Best you, uh, best you get that out of your head. I just said that for fun. But uh, back on subject here. You, so you start sitting back thinking, I want to open up my own restaurant, but what do I do? And so then the whole money thing comes up. And then uh, if you are lucky enough to move on in your life and open up your own restaurant, you start to hear the same questions that you ask your manager from people that you hired. And it, it's a horrible circle, uh, circle of events. Sure. Some of your bartenders that you uh, n- notice that bring in a lot of customers, bring in a lot of money and you want to keep them around. So you might throw them a couple extra bucks. Uh, there was actually one time that I remember where uh, my friend Shannon, uh, she actually wanted her boss to give her a title as lead bartender because she worked the prime hours and the customers loved her and so she wanted to have an actual title to go along with it something that looks really good on her resume and that never happened that idea kind of got uh thrown under the table i guess i just remember it never happening uh i've never looked for a title uh to be uh, as a bartender but i was always pretty careful about what all do I uh, feel like I need to be responsible for? No, I uh, I used to truthfully pay off my cook to mop the floor uh, because I didn't want to uh, uh, after my serving shift because that was part of your side work in the serving shift at the particular restaurant that I worked at at the time. You uh, cleaned up all the dishes. You put away... Uh, all the perishables you put away, uh, all the, uh, ketchups and mustards, because if you leave them out in the bar, somebody gets a little rowdy and starts spraying them all up on the ceiling, uh, get everything prepped for tomorrow. And then finally clean the bathrooms and mop, uh, mop the floor. There were times where I gave my dish or my, uh, cook an extra buck or two to a couple bucks to mop the floor for me because I didn't want to do it. Um, you lazy? Yes, definitely. But uh, I also had a bar full of customers. And if I, uh, I, uh, I, once I was done with all those customers, I am mentally, physically drained. I don't want to deal with anything anymore. My goal is to get finished and either sit down and relax or go find a friend or go home. Of course, there are, uh, on the flip side of the coin, there are managers who like to play a lot of things close to the hip. Micromeningitis, I think is what it's called. Um, one of my managers, they liked to do, they handled all the money themselves. They didn't want anybody to handle the money. They wanted to do the books at the end of the night, or, well, at the first thing in the morning because we had to do drops at night. They... Uh, they insisted on handling all the money and in a way, uh, no, I had two managers like that, uh, and they were both really anal retentive, but, uh, the manager, 
uh, would handle all the money, break down all the tills, make sure that uh, all the sales matched up with the money that you put in the drop, and there you go. One manager, he trusted us to do all do all that all for ourselves because he had a point of sale system. All we had to do at the end of the night was hit a couple buttons on the keyboard and it would print out all of our information, how much food we sold, what type of food we sold. And then we went and sat down with our drawer and then counted out the money for the next morning's till and then counted out all the money for the sales that night. And if the numbers matched up, awesome. If the numbers were too high, okay, that technically is yours. And if the numbers were too low, you got to bite the bullet. Which goes back to that one idiot waitress that I had that before the point of sale system, uh, for some reason, she only had $250 in sales, but managed to make a C note uh, uh, in tips. And But then we got the point of sale system, and then all of a sudden, uh, she was getting uh, like $700 in sales and make about $50 in tips. Kind of weird, huh? Not saying that point of sale systems are completely foolproof. There was one guy I heard about that worked at another restaurant who was proficient enough with computers where people would constantly ask to be sat in his section because he knew how to get onto the computer and change the prices. People getting ribeye steaks for uh, $5.00 but he would charge them the regular price and pocket the rest. And, you know, uh, that guy got fired from tons of tons of jobs. This, this guy was a fucking idiot. Let me tell you this uh, one quick story about this idiot server. Um, he got hired around a lot of places and there were warnings from other restaurants saying, uh, I wouldn't hire that guy. If there was a gun pointed to my head, just letting you know, you know, if you want to hire him, that's completely cool. But uh, I wouldn't uh, because legally that's pretty much all that you can say when references get called. So, but this guy, uh, I guess back in when he was in high school, he got caught, uh, he got pulled over and the police officer, this was back when uh, license, uh, the driver's license were uh, covered in plastic laminate. They're not the white cards like they are now. And the police officer took a good look at it and noticed Something was wrong with his ID because it had stuff that was in between the plastic that shouldn't have been there. Cop, of course, couldn't say what it was because, you know, that uh, there's all all sorts of legal ramifications that go along with that if he's wrong. But apparently the idiot uh, actually admitted to cutting lines of cocaine with his driver's license and the cocaine was making it in between the plastic uh, in between the plastic halves that uh, laminated his driver's license. So that should give you an idea of how big of an idiot it is. You need another example? Here's another example. The day he was fired at the bar that I worked at, he, uh, he had been working there for some time. I watched him work. He helped train me for the first two weeks. And I saw uh, the tips he was making he was doing a good job, but then one night we, uh, I, we left the bar. I got in my car. I started to drive away and I see him peering into the glass window, trying to look in. And, uh, of course, when we left the bar that night, we locked ourselves out. So leave the key inside and go out the back door, uh, back, the, uh, back door fire exit that locks behind us. He was trying to peer in there, see, and I thought nothing of it. I just went home. And the next morning I get a call from the manager saying, uh, do you mind coming in at 10 o'clock? And I said, yeah, sure. I'll be there. Uh, Cause anytime somebody had hours for me, I was there. Uh, and so I, I go in and after a couple hours, they talked to two, two different, uh, 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 two different bartenders that at that point were still working there about to be uh, past tense. Um, and they talked to two of the, uh, two of the bartenders and fired them both because what the guy was peering into the window for was a case that he had that normally most people 
back in those days would put the face of their radio in. Um, but there was no radio face inside this box. When the, uh, when the cook came in to get things started in the morning, he saw this case sitting on top of the bar. So he's like, I don't know, what is this? Opens it up, looks in, and there's uh, a bunch of marijuana in there. They found out he was selling marijuana behind, behind the bar, which goes along with today's, uh, uh, today's subject that you know we need to uh, pay some of these guys a little bit more otherwise you get these shifty people that try to do crap uh, uh, try to do things like deal drugs behind the bar so they called uh, I guess he called up before they could call them and said hey did I leave my radio face on top of the bar last night and he, they said why yes you did why don't you come on on come on in and get it and so he came in and got it and, and then got fired. I came in at 10 o'clock because I was supposed to learn the day side of the thing. I think their original intention was to put me on day side um, because they didn't want to, I, they didn't think I could handle the night side. And the reason why I tell you that is because that's what they told me. We don't think you can handle the night side. Really a boost for self esteem, those bastards. And, but, uh, so, but at, uh, they made arrangements for the server to come in late that night, but the server couldn't come in late that night because she was uh, taking care of her kids. And they said, can the new guy come in? And they said, the new guy's already here. He's been working since 10 o'clock. And they said, well, well, we'll ask him. And so they came up to me and said, hey, listen, uh, the bartenders that were supposed to work tonight, they're not coming in anymore. Uh, so can you work until closing and i was new at the job uh knew, truthfully old family friends they were in a lurch and so i said absolutely yeah i'll do it and so i worked from 10 a.m till about uh or 10 a.m till about 3 a.m and dear god did my feet hurt at the end of that shift uh because one i was wearing my dad's worn out combat boots that he got uh gotten viet brought home from vietnam and, but they were, they start out comfortable as hell, but then after a while you're standing on your feet the whole, whole night, they start to hurt. Uh, the word got around town quickly that those two particular bartenders weren't working around there. So a lot of people said, well, I don't knew, know the new bartender. I'm going to go somewhere else. It's kind of what you have to deal with when you're, new, when you're the new guy in town. So I was still trying to build up a cl uh, clientele, but Truthfully, that night, I ended up sitting at the bar watching that old cartoon show on Comedy Central, The Critic, and uh, just because there was nothing else to do. And I figured, well, I'm getting paid by the hour, so I might as well stay open until uh, official closing hours. And uh, that's what kept me alive that night, because otherwise, uh, the tips that I would have made that night probably wouldn't even covered the gas to get out there that uh get out there that night and drive home so thank god for that that's why the uh you know when you add on these extra responsibilities to your employees you got to sit back and you know put a carrot in front of them uh, i think that's a good analogy put a carrot in front of them say if you do this for me you uh you can have this now i'm not saying you have to bribe your uh, employees to do everything, but deep down inside managers, come on, you have to realize that it's you're, you are kind of screwing them. And sometimes you're passing the buck, uh, you know, get it off your plate, make somebody else do it. Uh, or, uh, that's the wrong way of saying it. The real way of saying it is get it off your plate, delegate, but, you gotta you gotta put some kind of carrot in front of them uh, to make them feel special, and you're not just dumping work on them, because otherwise they're gonna get burned out. They're and they're just gonna say, "Look, I can't do all of this stuff," and uh, then you got to be that one asshole that says, "Fine, I'll find somebody who will," and that uh, kills morale in the restaurant really quickly. And what happens when morale goes down with your bartenders and servers? Morale goes down in the kitchen. And when the morale goes down in the kitchen, the quality of stuff that goes out to your customers goes down. And that ruins the morale of the customers. And what happens to the customers when they don't feel happy? 
they leave and never come back. And then your restaurant doesn't make money again. You, you, the, sure, you can sit back and say, shit, so what? I lost a customer. I'll make two more just like it tomorrow. Yeah, sometimes that doesn't happen because word gets around, especially in small towns. And I'm sure there's uh, some of you managers out there that's right now saying, well, if I, uh, you know, try to compliment them, them too much or if I offer them too much for doing uh, certain things, they're going to stop trying. No, that's not always the case. I actually hate managers that think that. I've worked with a lot of managers in my life, and I've had managers that have actually said the words, if I can, if I praise you guys too much, you're going to stop trying. Yeah, well, if you don't give us any praise, we're going to stop trying too. It's, you know, it, it comes with the whole, do I live to work or do I work to live? And I just want to remind all of you people that we have restaurant workers, bar workers, we have a shitty job. We deal with uh, the worst customers uh, some of the times. Well, I mean, the, maybe uh, 90% of our customers are really awesome, but a lot of time, but that 10% can be really, really shitty. It's all, almost like Moss Eisley's spaceport. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. But you got to offer something to your employees uh, to make them feel special, to make them feel like you're working, f uh, that the manager's working for me, I'm going to work hard for them. Uh, it's, it's, that's where um, employee loyalty comes from. Nowadays, it just doesn't feel like that uh, there's no loyalty between the managers and the employees anymore. Because the managers uh, have it, it seems like a lot of these managers have this attitude. It's like, so what? If you leave, I'll get another person to replace you by tomorrow. And so, and then, you know, we sit back and figure, well, since we're replaceable, I'm sure somebody else needs me. So, and uh, and it becomes this big pile of shit, uh, especially the corporate places that you go work. Because corporate places, they they don't. Uh, you're a number. Uh, I, and yes, I'm going to talk shit about corporate for a second. Uh, you're a number to them. I mean, uh, you're sure your checks show up every Friday clockwork. Uh, sometimes at a mom and pop store. Yeah. You're going to be mad once in a while because the checks didn't show up, uh, right on time, but, uh, corporate, you get your money clockwork. Uh, uh but you're a number. Do you, if you, do record sales in a night. Do you see anything extra in your paycheck? Do you receive a uh, an award? Do you receive a gift certificate? Do you receive a pat on the back? I'll bet you most of you people just said no to your radio. And uh, no, I'm not psychic. Um, if those of you who said yes to your radio, uh, you're probably smiling right now. And, you know, hey, who doesn't love a good smile? But imagine, managers, if you had... One employee that did record sales in one night, and if you congratulated them, just as little things, hey, recognize, hey, you did great last night. You handled uh, a huge amount of tables. You brought in a bunch of sales. Congratulations, you did a great job. That alone can go a long way to keep morale with your. Uh, keep morale because they got recognized for something. You know, uh, you don't have to stand them up in front of uh, all the other employees at the morning meeting, but right before you unlock the doors and say, this person did this last night. We should all strive to be this person. No, I hate that. That actually embarrasses the shit out of me. Some of you might like the limelight, but that's just me. But the, the thing is, to give recognition where recognition is due. Uh, like a, a bartender, they had a two customers that decided that they wanted to fight over which is uh, who, which is the better captain, Kirk or uh, Captain Picard. And it got a little bit out of hand. 
it wasn't necessarily a fist fight, but it, you, you, anybody used to do those, uh, do those, that fight where you cross one arm over the other and cover your face with, uh, your hand. And where that was probably the extent of how the fight went, uh, especially when arguing who, who's the best captain Picard or captain Kirk. Uh, it's, uh, it, you managed to dis, uh, dissolve that without any incident. Nobody got hurt. The cops weren't called. And you were able to take care of everything, relax everybody, and get back to a nice, easy night. And wouldn't be and if the if your manager reads the logbook uh, and sees that you were able to take care of things, maybe even goes back in the security footage if you have security tapes, and sees that you were able to dissolve something from becoming something completely catastrophic, and just a little pat on the back, say, "Hey, you did a good job handling that last night." And, uh, you know, we're not expecting a huge bonus at Christmas, but hey, it wouldn't hurt. Okay, people, the bartender's got to take a potty break. That means it's time for the musical section of the podcast. I love this part. This week's musical guest uh, hails from New Brunswick, New Jersey. They've been recording, touring around for about 13 years. They're a three-piece rock band. Uh coming from their album chalk tape this is the screaming females with their song poison arrow
Once again, that was the Screaming Females with their single Poison Arrow, hailing from New Brunswick, New Jersey. If you want to find out more about them, head on over to Bandcamp.com and check out all of the music that they got going on there. And Bandcamp.com is just a great place for me to go find uh, new and independent music that I can use on this podcast. And everybody has been so awesome to allow me to use, use their music. Hey, just remember, if you're a band out there and want, want your music to be heard on my podcast, just email me, dude, at heybartenderpodcast.com. I will make that happen for you because I love promoting new music. Anyway, there's a lot of things that we can go off a lot about that the restaurant industry doesn't really catch on to. I mean, you see these people that uh, have nine to five jobs, work Monday through Friday, and they come up with a new procedure on how to do something that might save the company a couple thousand dollars, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. But if somebody in the restaurant industry sits back and says, well, I found this tool that can cut lemons perfectly for the bar. And all you have to do is put the lemon in, push the button, it cuts it up. That'll save the bartender uh, at least a half hour of work a night. And and then the bar manager would be, go, great, I'll order one tomorrow. Or, uh, I don't know, it's not really in the budget. You know, you could be saving the bar or restaurant some money and you uh, it might get put into uh put into the situation but you won't see a dime from any ideas that you have whether it has to do with efficiency safety nothing uh i mean you know if you go into your uh restaurant one of these days look around and s- s- say to yourself what can i do to make this place better and or make things easier for myself or maybe make things a little bit safer. Like if you're one of those bars that ha- doesn't have mats and you run the risk of slipping and breaking your ankle every night, uh, make a suggestion to your manager and see what how they handle it. You uh, might get a, uh, get a pat on the back. You might not. But, uh, you know, that is another technique that you can learn that will fit into future uh, endeavors. You know, you stand back and you sit back and think, what can I do to make this better? And then you might be able to take that idea and turn that into a business of your own. I mean, there's so many advantages to it. And uh, it's just too bad that uh, pretty much all restaurant workers get is their tips if they're lucky. And uh, I... Like I said, it is total bullshit that there are servers and bartenders out there that don't get paid an hourly wage. And they and then you run the risk of having this uh, these customers camp out at a table for hours that you could have turned over two or three times. That's taking up valuable real estate. That's money lost for you. The bar might not mind. I mean, there's been dozens of times where uh, the bar owner... The, the obviously the customer is being a complete prick, but they're a friend of the owner or the owner is afraid of confrontation. I had one owner that was incredibly afraid of comp- confrontation, even allowed the customers to answer the phone, the, the business phone. Can you believe that shit? And, uh, she, and you never saw anything good come out of it. Uh, and you know, no, raises no incentives and you know that i think that's how you would be able uh, a lot of restaurants nowadays would be able to keep their employees for a little bit longer sure employees if they see if they're working going to school working towards something uh you'll lose them that way if they're if they see something better on the horizon they're gonna you're gonna lose them that way but until then to keep them going from one restaurant to another the competition, you know, treat them, uh, you got to treat them a lot better than the other people. It's not, uh, I mean, sure. Restaurant workers, we don't get benefits. Uh, so maybe a little bit of extra here and there would help pay medical bills for themselves or their kids. And it's just unfair. 
you know, when it gets down to it. And you get these asshole customers that come in and say, why don't you get a real job? Well, truthfully, we do work a real job. We're just not paid very well. And we don't have the benefits. And uh, just because the person works in an office, has medical benefits, and are guaranteed to know that they're going to make whatever wage that year, doesn't make it a real job. And I mean, it, and it all depends on the point of view. Some people think of a real job as sitting at a desk and typing or writing important things down on a piece of paper. Other people think of a real job as something where you break a sweat. And sure, you don't have to be a construction worker. You can break a sweat while working in a bar because uh, just the crowd of people, the lights, and just the amount of energy that you have to put out running back and forth because a keg blew or uh, the vodka, you got to go find another bottle of vodka. You know, there's a lot of very hard physical endurance that bartenders and servers have to go through in order to make it through their night. It is a real job. We make money. We're uh, just highly unappreciated, aren't we? All right, people, it is last call, last call for alcohol. Come up to the bar, all right? You ain't getting shit. Hey, remember, at this virtual bar, you don't have to wear a face mask, but we do take social distancing to an extreme level. Uh, really quick, I want to do an Instagram shout-out. Uh, I get a lot of pe- a lot of you people that follow me on Instagram and show a lot of support. Uh, this person has been coming up a lot lately, and I'm going to give him a free... Uh, shout out here and a free free advertisement for him. It's called Election Vodka. Uh, he uh, this person has made their own or has is distributing their own vodka right now based on this year's elections. Uh, he comes out in uh, two two different flavors: uh, the incumbent versus the challenger. Uh, one flavor is Raspberry Rage. The other flavor is Bleeding Heart Blueberry. Go check out Election Vodka when you can. Uh, you can find them on Instagram at electionvodka.com. You can find out uh, what exactly they're selling other than just a, a raspberry vodka and a blueberry vodka. Uh, but also you can see uh, the design of their logo. It's kind of funny. Uh, also, like to thank the listeners. Thank you so much. I have passed over 6,000 downloads this year so far. I appreciate all of you so much that you're uh, keeping up with Hey Bartender Podcast. Also like to thank Screaming Females. Uh, Remember to go check out their album Chalk Tape and their single Poison Arrow. If you're in the New Brunswick, New Jersey er uh, area, as soon as this COVID-19 thing goes away, you'll probably be able to check them out in a uh, local club or something like that. But until then, go check out their album, uh, download it, uh, and help support them because they need to eat too, goddammit. Oh, hey, did some of you hear, uh, speaking in New Jersey, uh, from episode 95, Kaylin Whitney, she just got hitched this last week. She posted it on Instagram. Uh, all of my all my fans, I want you to go, go find her on Instagram. I have, uh, Kaylin Whitney, I think uh, it's at Lord Kale Mander on Instagram. Go congratulate her and her new fiancé, and uh, wish give them uh, good wishes for a long and beautiful marriage. Uh, some of you might know Kaylin Whitney on Instagram for giving these really awesome uh, talks about drinks and uh, what type of dr- uh, she can even tell what type of person you are by what kind of drink you order. Go congratulate Kaylin Whitney, and uh, let's all hope that they have a great marriage. You you heard it first here from Hey Bartender Podcast. So anyway, people, that's it for the show. Uh, Remember to go check out www.heybartenderpodcast.com for uh, any kind of t-shirts or swag that you may be interested in. Catch up on some old episodes. And don't forget to check out bartendersowncoffee.com and pick up some morning wake-up juice, a.k.a. coffee, today. Use promo code HEYBARTENDER for 20% off your entire order. Until the next time, ladies and gentlemen... Lots of love, lots of sex, lots of happiness, and don't take any shit from anyone. Good night. 
What do you mean it's let's go? I just got here.